All right, get ready, because today we are diving deep, and I mean deep, into the world of Philippine government accounting. We've got a mountain of official documents here, manuals, regulations, the works. We're talking manual on the new government accounting system, accounting policies, the kind of stuff that might make your eyes glaze over, but trust me. Buried within these pages is a fascinating story of how money flows through the Philippine government. Think of this as your crash course, your cheat sheet, to understanding how a single peso makes its way from the national budget to, say, a brand new school building. Now, I gotta be honest, I hit a bit of a snag when I first jumped into these documents. Acronyms, NGAS, RA, CDJ, it's like they're speaking a different language. Mm -hmm. Well, every system needs its own lingo, right? But don't worry, it's not as intimidating as it seems. Let's break it down, starting with that first one you mentioned, NGAS, the new government accounting system. This is our foundation, the bedrock of how the Philippine government handles its finances. All right, NGAS, got it. But what's the logic behind it all? Why so many rules, so many acronyms? Imagine this. You're responsible for tracking the money of an entire nation. Every peso earned, every peso spent. You'd need a pretty darn good system to keep track of it all, right? Right. That's where NGAS steps in. It's all about transparency and accountability, making sure every transaction is crystal clear. So it's like a giant, super detailed spreadsheet for the entire government. You got it. And just like a spreadsheet, NGAS has different sections, or as they call them, books. The Manual on the New Government Accounting System refers to these as regular agency books, RA books for short. Think of these as the main set of financial records each government agency uses. So each agency has its own RA books to keep track of their income and expenses. Seems straightforward enough. On the surface, yes. But here's where it gets interesting. NGES doesn't stop there. It also mandates other types of records to track specific activities. It's like having specialized tools for managing different parts of the government's finances. Specialized tools. Now you've piqued my curiosity. What kind of tools are we talking about? One that's absolutely crucial is the Cash Disbursements Journal, or CDJ. This is where every single payment made by an agency is recorded, down to the last peso. So every time an agency pays for something, whether it's office supplies or, say, construction materials for a new bridge, it gets logged in the CDJ. You got it. And here's where those acronyms come in handy. They act like tags or codes, helping to organize this massive amount of financial data. Right, because it's not just about recording the numbers, but understanding what those numbers represent. Exactly. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. We'll dive deeper into the fascinating world of these financial tools and those handy acronyms in the next part of our deep dive. All right, so last time we were talking about all these specialized tools within the NGAS, you piqued my curiosity. What else is in this financial toolbox? Well, get ready to explore the world of registries. These are key to understanding how government funds are actually used. Registries. All right, give me the rundown. What are we talking about here? Think of a registry like a meticulous logbook, a detailed chronicle of how funds are allocated, obligated, and spent. So not just recording the numbers, but documenting the entire journey of those funds. Exactly. And just like those acronyms we talked about, each registry has a specific purpose. They track different types of transactions, painting a clearer picture of how government money is being used. Okay, so it's all about breaking down these complex financial activities into manageable chunks. What's an example of a registry and how it plays a role? Let's say a government agency needs to cover bank charges for handling public funds. Those charges need to be tracked separately from, say, the agency's day-to-day -day operating expenses. Right, because those bank charges are directly related to managing the public's money. Precisely. That's where a registry like the RAOFE comes in the Registry of Allotments and Obligations Financial Expenses. RAOFE, got it. Another acronym for the collection. So, this RAOFE is specifically designed to keep track of those financial expenses. Exactly. It ensures transparency and allows for a more accurate analysis of the agency's budget. It's like categorizing your expenses, making sure everything is accounted for in its proper place. Exactly. And this granular approach is a recurring theme within NGAS. Another prime example is the Registry of Allotments and NCA, or ANCA. Or ANCA. Okay, I'm starting to get the hang of these acronyms. What's RNCA all about? Think of RNCA as an agency's financial control panel, giving them a comprehensive view of their budget. A financial control panel, I like that. So what kind of information are we seeing on this control panel? Well, RNCA tracks the entire life cycle of funds from the initial allotment an agency receives, think of it like their spending allowance. Okay, so the allotment is like the starting point, the go ahead to start planning a project. Precisely, and from there, 
our NCA tracks the release of those funds through something called a Notice of Cash Allocation, or NCA. So the NCA is like getting the green light to actually start spending, right? Get it. Our NCA diligently tracks how much has been allotted, how much has been released, how much has been spent, and the remaining balance. It's all about maintaining a real-time snapshot of their budget. It sounds like RNCA helps agencies stay organized and accountable, making sure they're spending within their means. Absolutely. And these are just two examples. We've got a whole lineup of registries, each with its own unique role to play. Remember those specialized tools we discussed earlier? We haven't even touched on Arler ID and Arler Ards yet. Oh boy, more acronyms. Bring them on. I'm ready for a deep dive into Arlardi and Arlarord. What kind of financial mysteries are we about to uncover? All right, so we've explored these registries, these meticulous records of how government funds are allocated and spent. But what about Arlardia and Arlards? Those acronyms left me hanging. Ah, uh, yes. Arlardia and Arlardes, they delve into the world of government borrowing, specifically domestic loans. Domestic loans, so money that the government borrows from within the Philippines. Exactly. Think of Arlarde as the meticulous librarian of loans, the registry of loan agreements domestic individual. Okay, so it keeps tabs on every single loan agreement, making sure all the details are in order. What kind of details are we talking about? Everything. The loan amount, the interest rate, the repayment schedule, it's all meticulously documented in Arlarde. It's like having a separate file folder for each loan, keeping all the information organized and easily accessible. Precisely. And that's where RRRDs comes in the Registry of Loan Agreements Domestic Summary. It swoops in to provide a bird's eye view of the government's overall debt. So it's like zooming out to see the big picture. RRRD gives us the details, while RRRD shows us the overall landscape of government borrowing. Exactly. It's about having both the micro and macro perspectives. And this dual approach highlights the NGAS's commitment to transparency and accountability in managing public funds. It's impressive how NGAS breaks down these complex financial activities into manageable, trackable pieces. But I have to ask, with all these safeguards in place, what happens if something seems off? Who steps in to investigate and ensure accountability? That's where the Commission on Audit, or COA, enters the picture. They're like the financial superheroes of the Philippine government, making sure everything is on the up and up. The COA? They have quite a reputation for being thorough. And for good reason. Their role is crucial. They act as independent auditors, carefully scrutinizing the financial records of government agencies. So they're not just checking if the math adds up, they're making sure those funds are being used appropriately and effectively. Absolutely. And their approach is grounded in something called fundamental auditing principles. These are like the gold standard for conducting audits, ensuring their work meets the highest levels of integrity and professionalism. Fundamental auditing principles. It sounds like they have a solid framework for their investigations. What's a key part of this framework? One of the most important is independence. The COA operates completely independently of any other government body. That independence is crucial. It means they can be truly objective, even if their findings might be critical of certain agencies or officials. Exactly. That's why the COA is known for its unwavering commitment to uncovering the truth, no matter where it leads. It's reassuring to know that there's a watchdog organization like the COA, ensuring that public funds are being used responsibly. Absolutely. They play a vital role in maintaining the integrity and accountability of the Philippine government's financial system. And they have a proven track record of uncovering irregularities and holding those responsible accountable for their actions. That's a powerful deterrent against corruption and misuse of public funds. It's good to know that someone is watching out for the public's best interests. Precisely. Their presence alone serves as a constant reminder that transparency and accountability are paramount. We've covered so much ground in this deep dive into Philippine government accounting. It's been quite a journey. It has. We've explored the intricate workings of NGAS from those detailed registries to the crucial role of the COA. And while we've delved into the technical aspects, it's important to remember the human element behind these systems. Absolutely. There are dedicated individuals working tirelessly behind the scenes to ensure that public funds are managed responsibly and effectively. It's a testament to the Philippines' commitment to good governance and transparency. That's a wrap on today's Deep Dive, folks. We've journeyed through the intricate world of Philippine government accounting, from budget allocations to meticulous audits. Remember, an informed citizenry is key to a stronger democracy. So stay curious, keep asking questions, and let's continue to explore these crucial topics together.